Hey guys, it's right here, and welcome back to another Clash Royale video. Now, when you're playing Clash Royale, you don't really want to just play one deck all of the time. To be honest, that gets boring very, very quickly, and in tournament standard events, you may want to switch to a different deck that is better suited for a specific game mode. For example, in the previous Rage Global tournament, it may be more beneficial to play a faster paced deck to a slow and heavy beatdown deck. So today, I'm going to be going over how I'm able to pick up pretty much any deck in Clash Royale and play it at least at a competent level. Now, before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you'd like to support me, feel free to use code LEGENDARY in the shop. Any support would be greatly appreciated. And with all of that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Now, when I'm picking up a new deck, there are four things that I really want to consider. The archetype of the deck, the pacing of the deck, the win condition, as well as the defensive options. So starting off with this Mega Knight deck here, the archetype is going to be Bridge Spam. We have a lot of fast paced cards that are, you know, meant to be played at the bridge to apply some quick pressure in the Bridge Spam element of this deck. Secondly, for the pacing of this deck, this deck is going to be moderately paced. Because it is a Bridge Spam deck, we're going to want to play this deck a little bit quickly, but because it's not as cheap as most Bridge Spam decks are, there are definitely going to be moments where you're holding back and actually focusing on the defense of this deck. Now for the offensive options of this deck, well, again, it's a bridge ban deck, so we have very, very quick options. My three main win conditions I would consider are your Bandit, your Ram Rider, as well as your Mega Knight. These are gonna be quite important because, I mean, obviously they're how you're gonna get to your opponent's tower. Last but not least, let's identify the defensive options we have in this deck. For that, we have the Inferno Dragon, we have the Ram Rider, and we have the Electro Wizard. Those are going to be your three main defensive options, and uh, now that I've very quickly uh, gotten those out of the way, I can actually focus on the Smash, and hopefully that Dark Prince doesn't charge, and it does! Oh my god, are you kidding me? So, anyways, after a very quick kind of breakdown of the deck, well, you're going to want to formulate a game plan for each matchup, because for every single match, you're not necessarily uh, going to want to play every single matchup the same way. I mean, I, I think that's pretty obvious, you know? Against an Expo deck, I would be playing this very differently uh, than I would be against this uh, Giant Skeleton Graveyard matchup. So, as you can see here, um, he's got a Graveyard deck, so what I'm going to want to do is mostly save the poison for the... Um, for the graveyard. Uh, that being said, I did just use it uh, to take down the wizard, but that's because I know that he had to spend so much elixir on defense that he wouldn't have enough elixir to go in on offense with the graveyard. And you can see here, I've cycled back to another poison anyways. Now, the reason why I'm actually going in with Mega Knights in the back in this matchup is because he doesn't have that much of a bridge spam element. He can't exactly build up a massive push at the bridge really quickly. And you can see here, I mean, he spent 11 elixir at the bridge and uh, he's not really gonna get too much out of it. I'm just gonna go in with a Ram Rider here, Bar Barrel to try and damage down that wizard. And um, hopefully the bandit can do something as well. Should dash to the Dark Prince and then to the bandit and then it should dash onto the tower as well. Now, let's see here. I think we're just going to rinse and repeat. Honestly, that defense didn't go all that badly, but I will play the Mega Knight slightly higher up this time, and he's going to respond in kind with the Giant Skeleton. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to once again build the offensive push, and this is actually a mode of offense that I didn't talk about um, that I didn't talk about uh, when I was breaking down this deck. You can also play this somewhat like a beatdown deck as well. You're building up these big pushers from the back when your opponent doesn't have uh, a, a way to actually quick pressure at the bridge. And you can see here, we're actually just building up a push, playing offense with defense here. And uh, yeah, we're going to probably get this Ram Rider to the tower. If not, it's going to at least get a small connection. And then we're immediately just going to begin building a, another Mega Knight push in the back just like so. And now we're going to snipe this wizard here. Uh, we're going to, of course, E-Wiz this, uh, e this graveyard. We don't want to waste our poison. Instead, I'm already going to begin building up a counter push because that E-Wiz is going to stay alive. And you can see here, that's a full health E-Wiz that I'm already going to have on an offensive push. Again, we use our quick pressure win conditions. Go ahead and try and predict the Tesla here. 
And, uh, let's see here. Well, the, uh, the Ram Rider decides to be, uh, not the smartest Ram Rider in the world. Almost gets a connection, but you can see here, we're just gonna be so relentless in our pushes here. And, uh, it's just gonna be so, so difficult for our opponents to stop. He doesn't even have a medium spell. Again, we go in with a barbell to try and tank a Tesla. Huh, well played by him. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, a snowball's gonna finish off the minions, and that's pretty much this game over. We have too many troops, and you can see, by breaking down the deck, identifying our ways to break through, as well as our defensive options, we were able to develop a game plan to take down this matchup. Now, you might say that that previous deck was a little bit popular, so let's go ahead and run a little bit more of an off-meta deck here with this giant skeleton hog deck. Starting off, let's go ahead and quickly identify the four things. It's a hog control deck, meaning that the pacing of this deck is going to be moderate. You know, you, you have the you have the quick offensive options, but you also have uh, quite a bit of defense here. Next up, with our offense here, as you can see, we have... Um, well, we have the hog rider and we have the giant skeleton. Those are going to be your two main ways to get to the opponent's tower. And for your defensive options, well, you have the wizard, of course, you have the giant skeleton, you have the knight as your mini tank, and you have the skeleton army. Now, putting all this stuff together, you can see here we are against a Lava Hound matchup, which is going to be slightly untraditional. You're not going to be playing this matchup um, as normally as you would expect, because... Against a Lava Hound deck, well, this deck only has one air counter, meaning that, uh, well, you're gonna have a bit of trouble here. So, starting off, let's go ahead, we'll go with the Hog Rider here, because that Baby Dragon means he's trying to probably save up, um, probably trying to save up for a Lava Hound, and we're, we're not gonna let that happen. So, we're gonna go in with a Knight here that'll do kind of double duty, it'll tank for the Baby Dragon for just a little bit, and, uh, we're just gonna go with the Skarmie here as well, take this stuff down, and it'll also require a bit of a response from the opponent here and you know if he goes with a lava hound in the back well then we're always ready with the giant skeleton at the bridge the reason we're doing this is because the only ground answer that he's shown here yeah is the uh, is the goblin cage and well you know we're just gonna try and take that goblin cage out of here of course i do a very bad job at playing my wizard um so that's not gonna help at all um but you can see here, we're just going to kind of rinse and repeat. This is, uh, we're going to try and kite this uh, Inferno Dragon, I believe, through the opposite lane here with our Hog Rider. And then we're just going to go ahead and fireball out these Lava Pups here. Pretty simple. We're also going to kite the Inferno Dragon just a little bit more with our Knight. And you can see we're really trying to take advantage of the fact that he doesn't have the best ground answer and we're playing these like hyper aggressive pushes at the bridge here and uh yeah we're trying to break through here he uses his arrows so we're gonna go all in here with our push we're gonna go in with a giant skeleton and a hog rider here let's see here okay that's gonna do pretty well a hog okay well the giant skeleton's kind of screwing that hog rider over right now uh which is kind of unfortunate but hey it's all good let's just go ahead go in like so we'll go in with his skarmy at the bridge here um, hopefully should kite. Okay, we won't kite that over, so I guess we're gonna have to tornado all this stuff together. And, uh, yeah, with eight seconds left, again, we're just gonna we're kind of rinse and repeat the same thing once again. We're gonna go with the giant skeleton at the bridge, timing that with that lava hound. Let's play that wizard here. Okay, good. I play it properly this time. It's gonna take down the goblin cage, and now we can go in with the hog rider. As you can see, we're applying so much offensive pressure that he simply cannot support his lava hound pushes. And, uh, yeah, pretty simple here. Hog gets one more hit, and that's just going to be within spell damage. So, that's going to be GG. Well played. Alright, so this third match here today is going to be using a minor cycle deck. So, starting off, the archetype is a minor cycle deck. You're cycling the miners to get chip damage onto the opponent's tower. Next up, the pacing of this deck. Well, it's going to be a rather quick deck. You're applying so much pressure, and ideally, you're going to be preventing your opponents from building up the pushes that they want to do. Third, your win conditions. Well, you actually have quite a few in this deck. You have the Miner, of course, you have the Elite Barbarians, you have the Wallbreakers, and you have the Rocket as well. Now, for the defensive options, well, you have the Tried and True Ice Wizard Tornado combination, Knight as your mini tank. Actually, I should have rocketed out that Musketeer. But anyways, you have your Ice Wizard Nado, Knight as the mini tank, and then your Tesla and your um, your Tesla and your E-Barbs as your kind of high output tank 
damage. So let's see here. Playing this matchup, we are against a hog deck, which is another quick cycle deck. So this is going to be rather interesting. So we're going to go with goblins here, take that down. The three towers will do a great job at taking down the hog rider. And to be honest here, in this matchup, we're probably just going to be rocket cycling the opponent out here. The reason is because the opponent is playing a hog deck, meaning that they can't actually build up that big of a push. He's going to give us rocket value, which we'll take here. But yeah, you can't build up that big of a push because the only win condition he really has is the Hog Rider, which we can very easily counter by just tornadoing it onto the tower. So this is completely our matchup here. All we have to do is just be careful. Make sure we always have one of our Hog counters in hand. And we have quite a few. We have the Tesla. We have the NATO. We have the... <laughs> We have the we have the elite barbarians i mean what can i say what can i say this is a very very good matchup so he's obviously going to try and build up a big hog push that's his only chance here is if he can build up these big hog pushes while out cycling my win conditions and what i'm going to do here is you know we're going to take down that musketeer first he uses his logs so we'll go in with our uh, wall breakers here yeah, but he's going to be able to counter it. Um, all that wall breakers are for is to help us cycle back to our, uh, our hog counters, as well as our rocket, which uh, well, it'll get us some chip damage. <laughs> um, so anyways, let's go ahead and send in another miner here. Don't really want to go in with the rocket because I feel like that would be a little bit too much. Uh, let's go in with the uh, Tesla here for that Hog Rider. And now that his Hog Rider is out of cycle and he can't go in with an offensive push, well, we're going to go in here with our Rocket here to take that out of the way. Tesla should be able to take out that Musketeer. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and use our Elite Barbarians. Uh, Hog might get a hit, actually, so I probably should have used the NATO, <laughs> to be honest. But that's all good. We can afford it. Uh, let's just quickly cycle to our Miner here. And, um... We're gonna nato that okay that okay yeah there we go try i was trying to make sure that that musketeer would go down and um yeah we're just gonna go in here once again with our tesla i'm actually gonna play it slightly over this time and uh, again we're just gonna try and cycle mm, wow good fireball um but it does miss one of the goblins so the hog will go down we just send in one more miner um for even more chip damage and um yeah there we go the ice wizard okay wow he's actually doing a great job at uh, at holding here uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to, you know, continue cycling. He's going to try and cycle two multiple hog riders, but that's not an issue. We can just play that Tesla down. And uh, yeah, that's not going to be an issue whatsoever. Um, at this point, let's just finish the game off as quickly as possible. Send in that rocket. Hopefully the musketeer stays in that range. There we go. Oh, we have the NATO, so we can just tornado that away. Um, let's just go ahead and send in another miner. Help us cycle to the rocket. And uh, that should pretty much just be GG's. The rocket, I'm not actually 100% sure how much damage it does, but I'm sure it does enough. So we're just going to go with our E-barbs here. Going with the Tesla. Don't even have to be in any particular placement. And then we can just probably send in the rocket, and that'll be GG well played. Uh, the tower's at 452. Okay, fine. It's going to make me wait just a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's gonna play it. Well, not if he plays the musketeer into that. But, uh, okay, well, wow, he's he's really making me work for this, ain't he? Um, but yeah, let's just send in the rocket, and that's gonna be GG. By breaking out the deck and identifying the matchups, you're gonna be much better off because the way you're gonna play is gonna be much more structured and organized. So there we go, a quick breakdown of how I'm able to pick up and play almost any deck in Clash Royale. These are some tips that literally can apply to anything that you want to play. But that being said, nothing beats experience. So, you know, if you really want to get super good at a deck, you're going to also want to play it and develop a mental map of how exactly you're going to play against all sorts of different matchups that you're going to face in the arena. But unfortunately, guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. Huge thanks to all of my channel members. You guys are the absolute Gs. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Array, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.